Hello everyone, my name is Mad Radio DX uh, UK Mic 7 Echo India Whiskey. I want to welcome you to this video where I give a quick uh, 10 questions and uh, answers on six months ownership of the Shegu G90 and the X6100. And the first question is, how has the reliability been on the Shegu G90 and the X6100? The answer is great, they have worked when I want to use them and have not caused me any issues. Second question is, have I had any issues when using the G90 or X6100? The answer is only on the software side of things when doing digital modes like FT8. Uh, for example, um, the FL rig application on Windows can be temperamental and stop communicating with my G90 or X6100 every now and again. The actual transceivers uh, themselves, they've been absolutely fine have, and have not given me any issues like lockups um, or powering down and so on. Question three, which one of the two am I the happiest with, G90 or X6100? The answer is, well, both really. Um, the G90 is a great all-rounder, and uh, while the X6100 has the six meter band, uh, which the G90 does not, again, both have made me very happy indeed, and I feel very uh, privileged to own both. Question four, which one of the two have I used when doing um, ham radio uh, activity outdoors? The answer to that is only the X6100 because it is uh, very easy to carry around being uh, small and having its own internal battery. By the way, the maximum transmitting power of the internal battery um, is 5 watts and when you use an external power source, um, it's uh, 10 watts maximum. Um, the G90 would need an external battery pack for outdoor operations because it does not have an internal battery. So that's why I've only used the X6100. Question five, are there any heat issues with the uh, with either the G90 or the X6100? The answer is no, because I cool the, uh, both of them down with fans. Uh, the G90 has a desktop fan when, uh, with an, uh, an internal fan that is available from Shegu sellers. Um, and uh, for the X6100, I use a USB fan at the back of the transceiver when in operation indoors. Also, when using the X6100, during external trips and not having a USB fan to cool it down. Uh, it can get very warm, but I wouldn't say it's anything too alarming. Um, if you are concerned about the, the, you know, the heat of the X6100 during uh, transmitting, you know, uh, let's say voice contacts or digital modes, then yeah, um, I would recommend cooling it down with a USB uh, powered fan uh, that is powered up with uh, via a USB power bank. Question six, have I suffered from uh, any signal bleed on the G90 or X6100 from strong FM or AM radio transmitters nearby? What I mean by signal bleed is any signal images or overload uh, that might be caused by, you know, for example, a, co uh, a strong commercial station nearby because they've got a strong, very strong transmitter nearby as well. The answer is that uh, to that is no, I have not had any signal bleed on both or not noticed any whatsoever. Um, if there is um, any signal bleed, that you might have on your G90 or X6100, then I would recommend just lowering, lowering the strength of the antenna or turn off the preamp on the transceiver because the preamp, what happens is that it amplifies the, uh, you know, the receiving signal. Question seven, when doing voice contacts with both the G90 or X6100, has any hams told me my voice sounds broken or distorted during a transmission? The answer is no. I've um, I've been getting good audio reports from other hams whenever doing voice contacts. Um, only once I was told my voice sounded low, but that was because I was on low power, uh, five watts to be uh, to be precise, and I was using a very basic antenna at the time. Question eight: Are there any bands on either the G90 or X6100 you cannot transmit on, even though they're available on both transceivers? And the answer to that is yes. Um, they are the 160 and 80 meter bands on both the G90 and X6200. Uh, this is because the SWR, the standing wave ratio, is too high on both transceivers, even though I use the ATU, the antenna tuning unit, um, to make the antenna as resonant as possible. For those that don't know, the SWR, or standing wave ratio, should be very low to avoid dam damaging the transceiver, and the antenna tuning unit, like I said, tries to... Um, make the antenna as resonant as possible to avoid that standing wave ratio going too high. Um, my guess is that I need proper matching antennas for both the 160 and 80 meter bands each. Um, but the thing is, I cannot have that, um, you know, because uh, I'm very limited for antenna installations in my ground floor flat. And also um, the landlord owns a flat and won't allow me to install uh, a permanent external antenna anyway. 
um, certainly one of my choice anyway. Um, question nine, which, uh, would I recommend both these transceivers um, after over six months uh, usage? The answer to that is yes, the G90 is a great budget alternative to anything from ICOM or Yesu, and the X6100 is very portable for outdoor use and is rock solid. I can tell you I dropped the X6100 once already, this was indoors by the way, and it still works with no damage whatsoever. Uh, no, no cosmetic damage and no uh, internal damage either. It still works like new. And the last question, question 10, would I consider upgrading to um, in future to anything from Icom or Yesu? The answer to that is no, and I'm in uh, no hurry whatsoever. If I decide, you know, decided I want to uh, upgrade to any anything from those two brands, um, I am extremely happy with both the G90 and the X6100. Uh, the results I've had uh, from uh, both continue to amaze me. An example is that I managed uh, three FT8 contacts last week to the USA from here in the, uh, in the UK uh, within the space of an hour on the uh, 12 meter band with my G90 using a loop antenna at ground floor level and at only 9 watts of power. And all this with radio equipment excluding uh, my laptop because I'm going to factor in the price as well. So the radio equipment in total was uh, £650 which is very cheap for ham radio equipment. So What's, uh, what was in this, uh, you know, in everything in total? Well, the Shegu G90 was 400 British pounds. The desktop fan stand, uh, fan stand was 50 pounds. The digital mode adapter um, for FT8 was uh, 50 pounds. The power supply, uh, 50 pounds. The loop antenna cost me 100 pounds. Um, so in total, yes, 650 pounds. Anything from Icom or Yesu would be costing me of, you know, over a thousand pounds or more. Because not only would those uh, transceivers from anything from Icom or Yesu would be more expensive, but I'd have to get a more expensive power supply. The one I use for my Shego G90 and X6100 indoors, it's actually meant for CB transceivers. I think it's up to something like 20 watts, um, and my Shego G90 goes up to 20 watts anyway. X6100, 10 watts on, on a external power maximum, um, you know, for the maximum transmitting power, 10 watts. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd have to get definitely have to get something more expensive for, uh, you know, anything from Icom or Yesu. And then I need a better antenna tuning unit. I need to buy an external one as well. So the price of the transceiver, better power supply and antenna tuning unit. I'm definitely looking at a minimum of probably a thousand pounds and maybe even more than a thousand pounds. And for the results I've had with the budget. Um, I spent with the Shegu G90 and the X6100. I think it's just very hard to beat at the moment um, if you're looking at any other brand. So thank you very much for watching this uh, video. 73 is to all and I'll see you in another one.